Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be installing the dust collection. We're gonna be running hard, hard piping, four inch PVC sewer drain line to all the tools in the shop. Let's get into it. Hope you enjoy. To start the installation, the first decision that was need to be made was where to place the dust collector. Your piping could also dictate where your dust collector should be, but I wanted it in a corner away from the upstairs and not against an interior wall, just to, for noise reduction. And this would create a very linear line to all the tools, except for the jointer and planer, which would be just off the main input. After creating a layout of the pipe, I started by cutting some blocking, which I'd be mounting to the walls and mounting the piping to the blocking. No dust will collect behind there, and this allows enough space for the fittings to be off the wall. After taking each measurement between fittings, you always had to add an extra inch and three quarters for each fitting on either side. All fittings were just dry fit onto the pipes. Um, with a little bit of force, they go on fairly easily. Sometimes you just gotta use a mallet or put it on the ground, give it a few knocks. You can also use a tape measure, make a mark at inch and three quarter on the pipe. And that way you know you're getting it fully seated or at least very close to. Oftentimes you can also just stick your hand into the pipe, which you'll see me do just to verify that the pipe is all the way in. Before mounting any piping on the wall, Grab a stud finder, find the stud in the area where I want to add the blocking, driving in two screws, whether it be one on either side or two on one side, just to hold the blocking in place. And then using these straps that I purchased um, for four inch dust collection uh, to hold it in place. connecting the system to a two horsepower dust collector from Princess Auto, which has a split Y four inch dust collector port. And I made the height so that it would slip on perfectly. And I'll just be using some foil tape after to seal this area. Next, I continued on up top to the next tools, which I have the bandsaw and the router table, where I'll be running a Y with two drops coming off of that. First off, I start by getting the stud finder, marking the studs, and then inserting the pipe. When I've cut it to the proper length, getting a level to make sure it's level, and then screwing in the blocking, screwing in the straps to hold it in place before I move on. That's basically the process for running the piping along the top. Uh, using full lengths when possible, as shown here. Finding it level, getting it supported if you're doing it by yourself. Putting in the blocking where necessary. And putting up straps where needed to hold it in place. to continue the drop between the bandsaw and the router table. Trying to use 45s whenever possible. I did use 290s off the start, more just to conserve some space there. Uh, we'll see if I end up having to go to 45s because they're restricting the flow that much. But here I run a Y to a 45 and then split to another Y where the left run will go to the bandsaw and the right run will go to the router. And for these uh, PowerTech Last gates that I'm using, they needed the inside diameter of the four inch pipe, not the fitting, for a good fit. So I would just cut off a one and three quarter inch piece and hit it into the fitting, put the blast gate inside there. Oh, uh, yeah, you, 
you don't want to see that. That's not what you came here for. Using an outdoor rated silicone sealant, I run a bead of silicone inside the pipe. And since the power tech flange is tapered slightly, it doesn't just push in the sealant, it actually squeezes in between. So it works great to seal it. And then I run two screws on either side to hold it in place and connecting the hose to finish up the bandsaw. For the router table, I put on the blast gate. I did not have any more of the self-cleaning ones on hand and installed a Y-split with a two and a half inch attachment on it. And the one piece will go to the top of the router and the other one will be going to the box underneath the router, which I haven't completed yet. If you are interested in any of the items that we've used here today for the dust collection, I've tried to tag everything I could to links down in the description. Go check them out. The best purchase that I made was this wireless remote for the dust collector. There are plenty of options online that range up to $100, $150. This was $20 on Amazon. Go check it out. This was a bit of a tricky corner to make. Here I was using 245s to make the angle. So I did it about two feet from the corner and I uh, tried to get a rough measurement on what the length would be of the pipe, but like every other situation, um, I tend to always cut it a bit longer than I think it is. Here I could slip on the opposing 45, put it in place, check it out. Do I need to cut it down, cut it down an inch or two, recheck it, and go from there. You can always cut a pipe shorter, but to add, up, add pieces to a pipe, that can always be a bit more difficult. From there, I got the measurement to the miter saw, where I'll be putting a drop in into the miter saw station. And I got it roughly where I want it to be, put the drop in place, and then continued on to the table saw, where I continued with a 45 up to the table saw and then put a 90 degree to run down since I was out of 45s. Made sure it was all level and went back and put in the blocking to secure it in place. Right near the table saw, there was nothing for support. So I just ran some strapping from the roof, put it in place, close as possible, put a level on it, adjusted it a little bit, and then ran a screw near the bottom just to keep some pressure on the pipe. Continued on to the miter station to finish that up, running another 45 off the Y, straight down to a blast gate, and then to a short hose that is just bungee corded near the table saw. Once the miter saw station is complete and the box is built around the miter station, this will come down below, right near the bottom of the miter saw. Hopefully collect as much dust as possible. Back to the table saw on the downspout, I added the blast gate. Um, this is one of the first blast gates that I did install and I added the silicone caulking on the blast gate and then pushed it in place. But I realized this was a lot messier than putting it on the inside of the pipe and then sliding the blast gate in. So that's what I did afterwards. With the purchase of my uh, dust collector, I also received a overhead dust collection system for a table saw. Um, I've never tried one of, one of these before. Um, wanted to give it a shot. More dust collection control on the table saw is always a plus in my eyes. So we'll see how this goes, if it gets in the way or not. Uh, so what I did, I started by mounting some blocking onto the roof using some lag screws to hold a 2x6 in, which I later changed for a 2x4. The lag screws that went into the, the stud immediately above were right in the way. So I only had a 2x4 that was, was that long, so I used a 2x4 instead. And then I mounted the support for the overhead dust collection onto that. And then I continued on to the dust collection port to finish that up using silicone at the joints to extend the tube below the blast gate. And then using a, a 4x2Y again. The 2.5 inch Y split will be going to the overhead dust collection and the 4 inch will connect to the bottom of the table saw. After that was all complete, I had to come back and modify the start just to get the piping in for the jointer and the planer. 
your eye added a Y right off the main and put in a blast gate just so in the rare times where I feel like I don't have enough collection or suction at the table saw, I can shut off this piping. And continuing on, I use as many Ys as possible except for the four, except for the 90 for the downspout on the jointer. And from there, I went to a Y as well for a split to the planer. Once the hosing was all connected in that area, to finish the project up, I went around and used foil tape at all connections just to seal it off even better. So that wraps up the dust collection video here in the shop. Um, this process in installing it is very simple. Um, this is the uh, normally the entry level type uh, dust collection um, for a one person shop. I think it's fine. Um, you can see a lot of YouTubers going to great extent to um, buy the higher end stuff. And while they're at that level and they can do that, uh, for me, I just can't justify that cost. They're spending thousands of dollars on these machines or on the piping, I should say. The machines themselves, I think they're more worth it than a simple uh, single stage unit like this. But for now, this can be upgraded to a two stage as well to uh, take the dust collection to a new level. But regarding the piping, this is just my opinion. For a one person shop, um, four inch piping uh, where you don't have to go far for a tool, I think it's very adequate enough. All this with the uh, blast gates, tape, and and hosing, which I had pre previously used, so that was very inexpensive, only cost me about two to three hundred dollars. Really, not a lot to uh, you know get more of the dust under control, get that out of your lungs. It's really not a big cost at all. Um, the dust collector and the hosing I had purchased previously used, and that I had bought in a bundle for four hundred dollars. So, in total for the dust collection, I've spent about six hundred dollars. I will be looking to do a review in the next couple months to see um, if there are any shortfalls in the system that I need to to address or uh, that I can recommend for other people that are going through this process. So if you have any questions or comments about the dust collection in the shop or any other tool in here that you've seen in the videos, please don't, don't hesitate to uh, comment down below. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen and you'd like to see more, like, comment, subscribe. And until the next one. God bless.